Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, October 18th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Northwest Atlantic and Hurricane Gonzalo moving rapidly off to the northeast now made a direct landfall on Bermuda last night. The eye encompassed the island, bringing very light winds reversing in the opposite direction in the back eye wall. And in some cases, the southern eye wall was actually worse for parts of the island. But I saw max wind gusts over 125 miles per hour at several locations on the island. And after all of that, zero fatalities and serious injuries were reported from Bermuda today and that is an amazing bit of news to hear. Congratulations to them for making that happen. That's incredible for a direct strong category 2 landfall. The worst hurricane hit since Fabian in 2003 and then you have to go all the way back to the 1920s to find comparable hits for Bermuda. So that's amazing for them. The Bermuda Weather Service even launched the Zero Z radio sound in the eye last night. So congratulations to them for getting that off as well. So uh, overall, very great news from Bermuda. Obviously some damage and cleanup to be done there, uh, but very good news nonetheless. Gonzalo will move uh, not over Newfoundland, it looks, or Newfoundland, it looks like, but southeast there, and uh, will bring still the northwest quadrant with tropical storm conditions to the coast. And we do have tropical storm watches for Newfoundland for later uh, tomorrow, or tonight and tomorrow. We'll bring a nasty bit of weather for them, and then Gonzalo will head out into the cold north Atlantic and undergo extratropical transition and no longer be a threat to land. There's other good news in the tropics today as well. We have Hurricane Anna moving south of the Hawaiian Islands, and for a state that rarely gets hit by tropical cyclones, this would have been the original forecast track over the islands would have been a devastating hit for the state, but Anna is uh, coming at a relatively safe distance now south of the islands and will move out harmlessly into the central North Pacific. Only the outer rain bands bringing gusty winds and heavy rain are uh, uh, impacting Hawaii. So this is a narrow miss after having a Zell earlier this year. This will not be a double hit year, which would be incredibly rare for Hawaii, but fortunately no double hit for them. And this will move out harmlessly to the west. Now back to the Atlantic, we have no Gonzalo left after it passes Newfoundland to track, and we are in late October. There's nothing out here imminent to develop, uh, but we have a pattern uh, that signifies watching the Western Caribbean and Southern Gulf of Mexico over the next 10 days or so, and I'll be talking about that for the rest of this video. We've had a, an active monsoonal gyre over the Central uh, American region, and what we've had is troughs coming down into the southeast U.S. and then lifting out. And all of these troughs, every time they come down like this, they stoke the fire, if you will, down here, because each trough allows moisture to surge northward a little bit. And sometimes it can get consolidated in the Western Caribbean or Bay of Campeche and form broad areas of tropical low pressure. And right now we have a tropical storm that formed over the Eastern Pacific, now moving inland over Mexico and is heading northeast toward the Bay of Campeche, which will help uh, develop an area of tropical low pressure in this area during the coming days. And we're going to have tropical low, pr low pressure coming out of the Southwest Caribbean as well. So all of this combined will uh, create activity centered over the Yucatan or near it during the next five to seven days. And this will be worth watching because I'm about to show you some model forecasts that indicate a pattern that could result in a subtropical rain event for the eastern gulf or at least uh, that's what I think it can indicate in the longer range. And this is what I'm talking about. This is the European Ensemble Mean, day six, 500 millibar height in anomaly. We have the trough off the east coast. Note we have a positively tilted ridge over the western US, and positively tilted just means it's not directly north-south. It's from southwest to northeast in orientation. And what this implies is that we get building heights in the northern part of the ridge over south Canada. And then this trough over Texas here will end up getting stuck to the south of this ridge as it comes down into the Gulf of Mexico. So by day nine, we get this trough stuck underneath this ridge to the north. The GFS shows the same thing. Big ridge, the heights build over South Canada, the tail end of this trough gets stuck, and by day nine, we have low heights stuck south of high heights in the middle of the Gulf, fi uh, farther east than the European has, but stuck over the Gulf nonetheless. 
And this is important because if we have a pattern like this, we have a lot of tropical moisture waiting down here because of the tropical storm coming into the Bay of Campeche. We're going to have low pressure sitting here. And if we have the trough coming down, that would shear this whole area. We'd have a giant subtropical jet running through here. So what would happen is we would not get any truly tropical development. There would be no tropical storms coming out of the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico. But because we have tropical low pressure and moisture here, this kind of a trough could end up creating subtropical development or at least some kind of messiness in the Gulf. And that can bring moisture out of the tropics northward into the Cuba, Bahamas, and Florida area on the eastern side of troughs like this. And uh, this is how we usually get subtropical storms in the Gulf of Mexico is when these troughs get cut off here. And with this much low pressure and moisture sitting down here over the next several days, that's going to be a concern. This is the European operational out to day three showing the broad low pressure developing here uh, because of that tropical storm coming across Mexico and input from the Southwest Caribbean as well. And by day seven, we see our low pressure shifting east over the Yucatan Channel, but note our upper low coming down over the coast of Texas here in the yellow colors. That's coming south. And when you get this upper low here, what that means is it tries to draw this low pressure northward on its eastern flank, and that can draw that moisture up into this region and bring heavy rains to this part of the world. And now to day nine, we see the low uh, the trough getting stuck still and now we see the low starting to propagate to the north this would be a very heavy rain event for florida or at least the southern parts and for cuba as well and uh, this is obviously day nine details impossible to know and none of the models really bring heavy rain to the southeast uh, states or the gulf coast most of it can find over south florida cuba and the bahamas but we could easily get a heavy rain event getting farther north here with this kind of a pattern where the trough gets stuck and again, it's very far out, so it's impossible to know what exactly could happen. But the pattern favors a trough getting stuck, and with so much tropical moisture waiting, I'm concerned that we could get that drawn north and have a heavy rain event due to either a subtropical low or a subtropical storm in the eastern Gulf region between October 25th and October 30th. So that is what will be watched over the coming days, many, many days to watch this evolve, not an imminent threat whatsoever, but we will have a lot of time to watch this tropical mess uh, fester down here. And then if we get a trough to come down and bring it north, this could become of concern for this area of the world in here as we get toward Halloween. So we'll keep a close eye on that. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.